Welcome to the podcast, Christopher Gill. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to talking to you. Amazing. Um, yeah, so before we dive right into things, I would love to hear and for the listeners to hear a little bit about your the nature of your work, a little bit about your background, and um, yeah, what are some of the things that you've been researching and studying for, for decades? Yes, decades. Um, well, I've written, I've been most interested in, in the interface between ethics and psychology, and I've been working on that for a long time. Um, I'm a classicist, so I, I'm, I'm, I know most about ancient, ancient philosophy, but I'm, that is ancient Greek and Roman philosophy, but I do try and relate it um, where possible to modern ideas and modern experience. Um, so I've written books about self and personality in uh, ancient Greece, uh, Greek literature and philosophy, Homer, Greek tragedy, Plato, um, and then I've also written about this sub the subject of, of ethics and psychology, the interface between that in the um, later period, the Hellenistic world, in connection with Stoicism, Epicureanism, and Roman writers. Uh, I've written about ethics and psychology in um, the interface between medicine, ancient medicine, and um, uh, philo and ancient philosophy, especially Galen, the medical writer Galen, second century CE and Stoicism. And most recently, I've been writing about Stoicism. So my most recent book, I don't know if this will be visible. Will it be visible? No, it's not visible. No, it's anyway, it's, it's learning to live naturally, Stoic ethics and its modern significance. And that's probably the book that's going to be most relevant to our discussion today and various things that I've written about that. Um, and you might say, well, what guided the sort of passage from one topic to another? And um, well, I suppose it's really chronological. I mean, I mean, to a large extent, it's chronological. I started with, with classical Greece, early and classical Greece, Homer is the first poet and, and so on. And then I worked forward to Hellenistic Greece, which comes after classical Greek thought in the third century BCE, um, and partly that, and also I suppose partly I've I've focused more recently. I focused on authors um, that I could potentially whose ideas I could adopt. Mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of work in my life on Plato, but. The more I think about Plato, the more reservations I have about various aspects of his thought. Um, and whereas the Stoics, I find less reservations. I feel that one could actually uh, live a Stoic life and adopt Stoic ideas without as many reservations as with Plato. Um, I mean, for instance, Plato has this great tendency to divide the body and the mind mm -hmm. and 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 ideal forms and truth and the world particularities and, and the stakes don't do that they're much more holistic um they 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 situate the the, the mind within the body um and they situate they see that truth is something and, and and the ideal is something that's embodied in the world so i find their their more unified and holistic approach uh more congenial so that's why I've tended to work on on stoicism most recently. I don't have to keep on uh, uh, explaining yeah. away features of Plato that I don't like so much. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Well, awesome. I'm yeah happy to dive into some of the more recent stuff and especially around stoicism. Have lots of questions for you, and it feels like there's a lot of interesting aspects of your work that I would love to explore. Um, I think as a starting point, I would love to hear you speak a little bit on, um, yeah, you talk about the care for self, care for others, and care for world. There's this kind of like triple. And what I found fascinating was how you speak about how the care for others um, isn't 
essentially the same as altruism where it's is like in our modern culture at least from how i was understanding how you were speaking about it was that modern cultures tends to see care for others as inherently good inherently altruistic and you were actually saying that potentially um it could be good or it could be bad and the same for care for self it could be done in a virtuous way or a non-virtuous way so i'd love to hear you talk about you know like what does it look like to to care for self to care for others in a way that is based on virtue and ethics rather than just like having this duality of uh, altruism or egoism and kind of pitting those against each other's and it i would yeah it feels to me like you have a quite nuanced and very um yeah nuanced way of understanding how we're showing up for self and others in the world um, and I would love to hear you um, share a little bit about, you know, the stoic perspective on that or and how you're relating to that these days. OK, so let me just sort of talk a bit, a bit about those respective contrasts, first of all. Yeah, so a very familiar, a very familiar contrast in, in modern thought is is this. The idea there is we have the idea that people are, as it were, basically selfish, but that they can be led. By, by moral education uh, or by religion or whatever it might be to, um, to a better state of mind. And that would be caring, that would be caring for others, that would be altruism. Mm -hmm. And these tend to be presented as a kind of binary contrast. So, you know, it's, it's either you're thinking about yourself, egoism, bad, or you're thinking about other people, altruism, good. Now, the I mean, it isn't actually just stoicism, but 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 in the ancient world, that's not how things tend to be divided. Um, the contrast is between virtue and vice, between doing living badly and living well, and and you can live well both in the choices that you make that 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 relate to, to yourself, to your actions. Uh, to your to how you eat, how you drink, how you perform all the activities that are part of being an agent, or you can live well or badly in relation to others. Um, um, that you know, that, is, that is, you will you will you will treat them unjustly, or you will lack courage, or you will lack wisdom in the way you treat towards them. So the whole map, as it were, is being divided up rather differently. The map is centered on virtue versus vice rather than on self and others and this has a lot of very interesting implications because there is a, a sort of problem about it. well there's several problems about altruism um okay so we're supposed to be care we're, we're supposed to not care about ourselves but only to care about other people and yet then you might ask well what happens what about the the attitude of other people towards us are they also meant to care about us rather than about themselves? Well, OK, fine. Well, perhaps that's the way they're meant to care. But then suddenly we've got quite a different picture now, don't we? If you combine those two things, we have a kind of reciprocity. We have a kind of mutual care, um, but of a rather odd kind. So one kind of care is OK and another kind of care is not OK. I think there are huge problems, really, with with the altruism model, um, we're meant to we're meant to think about other people, not ourselves, and yet those other people are only me are, are, are not meant to be thinking about themselves too. It's, there's a kind of you know odd d disparity about all this. It's also utterly unrealistic because you know I think you know every everybody's born into the world as as a you know as a kind of unit, um, mm -hmm. and yet we're also born into the world enmeshed with relationships you know so we're a single organism you know i've only got one body but my, but but i wouldn't my my body wouldn't have come into the world if i didn't have a, a mother and a father and if i hadn't been brought up by them and and sh and my life shaped by by them and by my family and by all the people around me so i think the the whole idea of, of just, you know, selfishness versus care for others is 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 lacking in a kind of natural realism, if you like. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, yeah, does that help to make make a start anyway? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I would, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, that's a great start. I would love to hear. So what I'm getting is that in our modern culture, there's this like egoism, bad, altruism, good. Yes. And then you started talking a little bit about vers- uh, virtues and vices as a sort of yes. alternative I would love to hear you like uh, elaborate a little bit on the virtues and vices thing. Like what does okay. it look like to live according to virtues? And maybe, maybe that means focusing on art on oneself more than others for a little bit of time to develop those virtues or, or like what is the reciprocal relationship of embodying yes. these virtues in self and in participating in community and collectives? Yes, I don't, Right. Okay. So, okay. So, what? How do we learn about the virtues, and and how do we express them? Or, uh, yeah, a good place to start uh, is like what? What I think you mentioned like four main virtues, or like yes, exactly. What are these yeah, virtues yeah. that we're actually embodying in the first place? That could be a sure. great start too. Sure. Okay. So the Stoics, um, since we're mainly talking about them, operate with with four cardinal virtues: uh, wisdom courage, um, um, temperance or moderation or self-control, and justice. And people sometimes say, oh, well, why why these virtues? What about all the other virtues? But the point about these virtues is that they're kind of generic virtues. They cover whole areas of human experience. So wisdom uh, covers the area of of, um, rational understanding or understanding generally. Um, courage deals with the area of how we deal with 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 danger and also with with our aspirations. Uh, temperance or moderation uh, covers the area of our desires and emotions, and justice covers our relations with other people, how we relate to other people. Um, and justice isn't just a matter of, as it were, legality. Though it can be that. Um, uh, uh, and doing what's right. It's also, um, un- and the, the Stoics would situate generosity, for instance, uh, unforced generosity as being part of justice. So these are kind of four ways of mapping the whole areas of human experience. And if we think about, about any one of these virtues, they all involve, as it were, ac- relations towards oneself and relations towards others. So if you think about courage, for instance, uh, courage is partly concerned with with danger and how you how you deal with danger. It's also concerned with what our overall objectives are. Now, danger is something that both affects us as individuals, but it also affects us um, as families or members of communities. and so danger isn't, you know, you can't say, well, is it about me or is it about other people? Well, no, it's about both. It's about, it's about, it's about me as a, a member of um, a member of society, as a, as a member of my family, as, as, as a member of my nation, and all, and all those things are connected. Um, so I think the, 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 as soon as you st- actually start looking at, at any one virtue and how it's operating uh, and, and what, it, what it includes, um, you, you recognize that, that, that there are different, you know, that there are both self-related and other related aspects. So it isn't that, you know, on Wednesday, I'm only exercising self-related virtues. And then on Thursday, I, you know, sort of um, look out of the window and decide, oh, I've got to exercise <laughs> some other related virtue. Any given virtue has these different aspects to it. Um, mm. Even though you might be doing one on on your own, you might be going out to fight, you know, on your mm. own. But of course, it, you're not fighting typically for yourself. You're fighting for for your family, for your children, for your, you know, right. and so on. So, so it cuts, it's all a question of how you cut, a, you know, how you cut the sli- slices of reality, as it were, and and how they how they bear on each other. But I, I think that the ancient way is in fact much more um, 
much more realistic in many ways, um, um, and the Stoic way in particular. Um, and the, 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 the tendency to, to contrast very sharply selfishness and other relatedness is, 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 is both artificial and, and doesn't quite get, you know, take us far, in, far enough into um, the reality of, of, of ethical experience. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, I, and I've heard you speaking a bit on this in some of your lectures as well. Um, when you speak on caring for nature, you speak yeah. about caring, uh, you speak about how ultimately we are a part of nature. And so like if we're that, uh, I'm trying to remember how exactly you said it, but basically our happiness depends on the flourishing of nature in some fundamental way. And it felt like I wanted to bring that in here because it, yes. um, I was getting I'm curious to hear, and this might be a little bit of a detour, so take it where you may, but like how identity plays into this, because um, if I identify myself as this individual agent separate from the collective, from any of these communal things, then there's going to be this really hard distinction in my mind between self, like uh, caring for self and caring for other. And what I'm almost hearing and what you're saying is this sense of like our identity as a self is also part of identity as participating in a community. So who I am, like if I'm caring for myself, I'm caring for the ways that I'm participating in community, participating in family all of these things. And so I'm almost getting this sense that it's a, like an identity level thing of how, how am I identifying with myself as, as part of this collective, as part of nature, um, and then seeing that the flourishing of the community or the flourishing of nature supports mm -hmm. my individual flourishing. I don't know if that fu fully was coherent, but I, I'm curious what that brought up in you and kind of seeing how um, our ethics and choice-making is shaped by how we identify ourselves as parts of community um, and nature. Yes. No, I, I, I see exactly what you're saying. Yeah, let, perhaps I could refer back to some of my earlier work. And I, I, one of the images I used in talking about Greek thought generally was the idea of the self in dialogue. Um, because when we use words like self in the in the modern era, we tend to often think of, it, of the self as something rather isolated. You know, the the I. It's, it's all about the I or the inner kind of inner inner I. You know, um, uh, the letter I, I right. this person, um, or could be the I that looks out at the world. <laughs> the various sorts of eyes. But we do tend to, there's a tendency to think of I as the self, as something unitary. Um, and I think in the ancient world, there's a, uh, the, 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 if, to the extent that they have a notion of self, it's much more, um, it's much more um, that of uh, somebody who is engaged in a kind of ongoing dialogue with others, that the self mm -hmm. e exists as, a, the self is in dialogue. The self is a kind of interlocutor. The self is, is someone engaged in a kind of ongoing inter, uh, conversation. So it isn't that we have to, you know, there's a self and there's society. No, we're all part of society. We're all participants in society. We're all, we're sharing in society. Society isn't a sort of great umbrella that's quite distinct from us. We are uh, we are we make up the the umbrella by our participation. So it, one one image I use is of the the self as engaged in three different kinds of dialogue. There's a dialogue between, as it were, an, a psychological aspect between aspects of the self which are going on within us. Um, there is dialogue with others, an ongoing dialogue with others. And a third kind of dialogue is shared reflection, shared reflection about the world. We, we t sometimes tend to contrast uh, dealing with others and, and, and so on with uh, and, and direct engagement with reflection. But no, I think the Greeks tend to think of reflection uh, and thought, theoretical work, as itself a kind of partnership. The Platonic dialogues, everything takes place in a dialogue. 
-hmm. So thinking is something that you do with others. You, you, you solve problems, you address problems, you tackle the meaning of life with others. And, and so that's, that's a sort of larger uh, a picture that, that um, perhaps might be helpful. And I think that idea does apply also in largely in stoicism too. Mm -hmm. But I think that the further dimension that, that I, I tended to bring in with, with stoicism and, and their great interest in nature is, is, is that uh, there is also the natural world, a further, if you like, and a further dimension of our mm -hmm. kind of dialogue is also the dialogue that, that, that reflects the fact that we're not merely humans. Um, well, we are, we are humans, but humans, human beings are part of the world. We are an integral part of the world. Um, and this is something they, uh, the, the Stoics are, are very strongly aware of. Hmm. So, um, and so the dialogue, the dialogue between these three parts, the part of the dialogue within ourselves, the dialogue with others, and reflective dialogue can be in a sense extended to taking into account of nature. And I can say a bit more, perhaps you, Perhaps you'd like to say something, uh, and then I can say a bit more about 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 what the Stoics think about nature and and how this relates. Yeah, I would love I would love to hear more about the Stoic relationship to nature and in that and what's coming up. One question that was coming up was, yeah, I mean, it feels like in our modern society, it's there's so much of a focus on individualism in becoming successful as an individual uh, in, in dissonance with the whole or, or like separate from, from nature or from society. And so I'm wondering, yeah, like it feels like your work to me has a lot of implications on uh, countering this belief that the individual is the most real thing or that the, that, that um, like individual success as seems to be almost the highest like value in in modern society, or at least that's what I've experienced is like individual success as being of the utmost importance. And so yeah. it, I, I would love to explore how like potentially um, the, your work on stoicism and the perspectives that you're bringing forth almost seem to counteract that or provide a, an alternative to seeing the self, the individual as the only, as, as an isolated unit in trying to achieve success for that isolated unit. Sure. Well, there's 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 a couple of things. Let, let's talk. Can I talk a bit of, first of all about the, the Stoic sort of value system? Um, yeah, absolutely. Then we can go on to talk about 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 nature in a broader sense. Absolutely. Okay, so the Stoics have a, a very useful um, distinction, which they well, let's say what what do the Stoics think we re basically want to, to do or be? What do we want to do with our lives? What, what is it that we most want? Okay, well, we, what we most want, this is actually a general ancient view, is happiness. Okay, we, we, what we most want is happiness, uh, which they, they in, in Greek, that's eudaimonia. That's this word, eudaimonia. And, and the, the Stoics think, okay, we all want happiness. Um, but what is happiness? <laughs> what is happiness? And by happiness, they tend not to mean a, a state of mind. We tend to think of happiness as a state of mind. If we could just get to that state of mind, we'd be happy. Stoics think of happiness as a way of living. So, so happiness is is so what what we most want is as is to live in a certain way. Um, so then the question is, what is the happy life? And the answer that they give is that it's. That there are two, well, they give several answers, but but one answer is the life according to virtue. It's the virtuous life. They think that is the happy life, mm -hmm. um, and they also think it's the life according to nature. Um, and then you might say, well, okay, <laughs> um, well, there's various questions now, but 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 what is when you say according to nature, according to what nature? Well, there's two main ideas the Stoics have in mind. One is according to human nature. The happy life is the best human life. If we live the best possible life as a human being, mm -hmm. then we will be happy um, and happy also, by the way, 
The Stoics also think that state of mind is important, but they think the state of mind follows the way you live. That if you live what they call a happy life, then you'll also have peace of mind and psychological unity and a sense of well-being. But those things, you can't, there's no good searching for them on their own. You've got to get the best kind of life first, as it were, you've got to aim at living in a certain way, and then that will carry with it the state of mind. But if you aim at the state of mind, you'll just end up in a in a corner, or you'll you'll end up in a in a in a blind alley because it doesn't you know it has no content. Mm -hmm. So okay, so 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 the life of happiness is partly the life according to human nature, and then human nature they tend to describe in two ways. Um, they think that human beings have two characteristics in relation to other animals. Uh, they think we are animals, but but animals of a certain kind. Um, one is. Uh, human beings are characterized by rationality. Our lives are pervaded by a certain kind of ability to reason and, and to make judgments. Um, and that makes our lives different. The other aspect is um, sociability. Um, that, that sociability is not something that's, 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 that's artificial to us or added on to our nature. It's an integral part of our nature. So it's the combination of rationality and sociability that make up what it is to be human. So the happiness then, the life according to nature is in part living according to the best kind of human nature, which is living according to rationality and sociability combined. And that is living also, that is also living according to the virtues. And if we do that, then that also brings with it the sense of well-being and coherence and uh, satisfaction, if you like, that we we more commonly associate with happiness. Do you okay. do you see this more as a striving for the virtues rather than like in achieving them? Is it like a constant yes. process, a dynamic process yes. of co consistently trying to come yes. into alignment with them? Yes, it is. That is how the Stoics see it. So it isn't as if, oh, gosh, I'm now 16. I ought to be, I ought to have all the virtues, you know, um, or gosh, now I'm 18 or, or, or you know, oh, gosh, uh, 22 now, you know, so I'm, I've got the virtues. So that's it. Okay, it's over. <laughs> A game over. <laughs> now I'm wise, brave, uh, uh, um, temperate and just and well I just have to kind of you know I just have to perform these 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 various times no it's not like that mm -hmm. no these are ideals that we work towards mm -hmm. and we don't know at any given time how far we've got you might say oh dear that's not very good I want to know exactly you know have I reached level three um, <laughs> mm, no maybe I've reached level five it isn't like that. No, these are ideals. There are there ideas. That's they have this idea of the wise person, and people think, oh, well, that's pretty useless. What is this wise person? The wise person is just what each of us are. It's what each of us are at our best. So, so, so the wise person. Okay. So, so yes, it's a matter of aspiration. So, so to have the, the you don't have the virtues. The virtues are. Um, Part, a part of the fabric of, of our objectives at, at any given time. And that's not problematic because human beings are the kind of animals that, that live with objectives in mind the whole time. We have objectives. Uh, you were saying earlier about the, the idea is a lot of people just live with the idea of, of success and that's an objective. But mm -hmm. what you want to do, the sex think, is to get a better understanding of what the really worthwhile objectives are. That's mm -hmm. what matters. Um, by the way, I, just just staying with values, and before we get to nature as a whole, totally. um, a, another distinction that the, the, the Stoics draw, which is a really useful one, is between um, virt, what's between virt, the virtues and what they call indifference. Um, indifference are the things that don't really ultimately matter as well, they don't matter in the way that the virtues matter. So the virtues determine whether or not we're living well or living badly, full stop. Now the indifference 
are things that we, uh, at least the preferred indifference, are things that we naturally want to have. We naturally want money. Uh, we naturally want, if you like, success. We want relationships. We want property. Uh, we can't do without these things. These are these are the stuff of human life. Mm -hmm. Of course, we want these things. That's what human beings naturally want. But they don't. You can <laughs> you can add them all together, and they won't make the happy life. They won't make a life according to virtue. They won't make the best possible human life. Just acquiring money, or acquiring success, or or acquiring a partner by itself, it doesn't confirm happiness. It doesn't confer happiness. It doesn't make you living a good life. You know, you could you have what well, we know we have many examples of this. We have people of enormous wealth. Mm -hmm. They completely yeah. lack the virtues. Right, right. Wisdom, courage, and so on. We see these people all the time. Um, and they are us too. We are we are those people. Um, um, so 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 that's what what makes the difference is living well is living wisely is living justly is living courageously mm -hmm. it's 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 and so and then of course whether you have the success the worldly success or whether you don't have it at some level doesn't matter so it might be that you know at, at time one you're fantastically rich and you and and, and then at time two you know, five years later, you're not fantastically rich, but you still might be leading a good human life. Mm -hmm. You might be be exercising the virtues. You're just doing so in a different way. So that's why um, the ethic, the ethos of success is, is wrong, is misguided, because it's focusing on what the Stoics would call a preferred indifference. It's focusing on something that doesn't really make the difference between happiness and its absence. And so I'm I'm getting this distinction here and I'm trying to like connect the dots of like eudaimonia being yes. being striving striving for virtues. Or, well or, eudaimonia technically is is getting there. So eudaimonia is getting, okay. is getting there. Well we're mm -hmm. so we're striving for happiness. So we're striving, striving for, for it. We're striving we're striving for the virtues. But 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 the process of striving isn't just a sort of uh, endlessly pointless search for something we're never going to get any better. I mean, it is it it we make the Stoics have this idea of making progress. We mm. make progress. Yes. Uh -huh. um, again, you might say, well, I I want to know exactly how far I'm getting. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, life isn't yeah. like that. It just isn't like that. But uh -huh. but striving making progress is crucial and a sense of making progress is crucial mm -hmm. yeah and so and so, so i'm so is, is the goal the virtues of the goal and so we're, what we're aiming at is so and and it's this goal directedness is crucial mm -hmm. because the, the goal directedness is towards the virtuous life and not the goal directedness towards money mm -hmm. success property or indeed relationships on their own because you can say oh well you know great i've got you know i've got this most fa fantastic partner you know i mean she's transformed my life but actually if you're st if you're morally a complete mess this relationship will be a disaster mm -hmm. you know and you and and you might oh good i've got you know i've got i've got a wife and two kids everything's fine i've, I've got it you know i've got i've got it um and it could still be a disaster because you won't be living a good human life. You won't be living according to the virtues. Mm -hmm. So it's all about it's the, so what the Stoics and what the Greeks call the telos, the goal, is a very crucial. So it's the goal. What you form as your goal is is absolutely crucial. Absolutely. And so indifference. Yes. I'm getting this like this like yeah. uh pitting to pitting against each other of like mm. eudaimonia and indifference and i'm seeing like yes. indifference as like having objectives that are not the virtues or or yes. moving towards something that is yes. not yes. uh wisdom courage justice temperance yes. and exactly what the thing about the indifference is people think they are the good people think that 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 getting the money 
is is going to be is by itself going to be good or oh. getting success is going to be the good the good is the life according to virtue the right. life according to so it's getting a, a correct understanding of what actually is good that is what has intrinsic value right right because and because it, to the person what, that's because to the person that's striving for money that to them feels like the best thing or the that feels like the right thing it, to strive for exactly exactly so the striving is for so money equals the good and that's what you strive for and um, so and so from what you're saying is that it's an inaccurate view of what the good actually is yes on the state view it is yes, uh -huh. it's, it's a complete mistake and the the if, if you want an example of that uh, well <laughs> there's the famous example of Midas the Midas touch you know Midas uh, was somebody who um, he's a mythical figure but Midas okay so he 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 was somebody who thought that money conferred happiness or money was the good mm -hmm. and so someone said to him well would you like to be in a, in a, in a uh, would you would you like it that that everything you touched turned to gold and and so he's oh yes 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 <laughs> so suddenly he finds that everything he touches turns to gold and then he tries to take a drink of water and <laughs> and it turns to gold <laughs> or he tries well, to eat something and it turns to gold yeah <laughs> so the midas the midas touch is 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 that money has you know and, and that's what happens to people who make money into the good. Everything turns to gold, but it, they turn out they find that actually they can no longer live uh, because mm -hmm. it blocks out all sorts of reality. You can't have normal relationships. You can't, um, nothing has the value that it would normally have and so on. So it's kind of metaphor for, mm -hmm. for a life that's been corrupted by the love of money. Totally. Totally. And, and I'm, uh, yeah. And I'm sitting with this, what you talk about, like ethical development, like, uh, uh yeah. the development, uh, you talk, you're speaking on how we can develop and become more wise, more courageous, more just, there's like a developmental yes. Yes. scale here. And maybe we can't measure exactly like how wise or how courageous, but, but that doesn't mean that there's no developments. And so I'm trying to tie this into the nature or the um, identity right. as community aspect. Right. And, I, and I'm wondering if you have that, that connection. Um, well, which do you want me to talk about the community or do you want me to talk about nature as a whole? Um, let's start with, community let's start yeah. with community how does ethical okay. development what is like because okay. ethical development implies like lesser or greater and so like yeah. what would be like this lesser ethical relationship to community or a greater a greater developed ethical relationship to community okay um well let's first of all just think yes let's go back to we talked earlier about care for oneself mm -hmm. um, and the stoics do talk about care for oneself and they think one form of care for oneself is just realizing the point i just made earlier about indifference and virtues that mm -hmm. uh, okay no, no, let's go back a bit so mm -hmm. care for oneself is first of all they think that the stoic we are naturally inclined to go for what they call the preferred indifference we are naturally inclined as human beings to go towards um uh, uh money status you know houses relationships um we're the kind of animals that that that, that because these are as i said before these are the stuff of human life if we don't engage in, in if we don't have these as in some sense objectives um then well it's hard to know what kind of life we're leading really we, we'd just be like one of these you know so the, these people who go and live in the desert and live on poles or something i mean so these are this is the stuff of human life so we do we are naturally inclined to want these kind of things but the de the, de the primary form of development that that falls under self-care is recognizing that is 
that, that these things are, are indifferent and they're they're not, they're not the good. But so that 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 recognition, that that gradual and progressive recognition, is something that uh, is fundamental to self care. Now, okay, you then say, well, how does this relate to care for others? Well, any of these indifference have, um, if you like, a self-related aspect or an other-related aspect. So when we want, say, uh, typically when we want property, supposing we want to acquire property, we want to acquire money, we're not normally thinking of ourselves just as a kind of isolated unit. Um, but 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 we want these things for the people who share our lives. So you want you want to get a job, you want to get an income, but and of course you you might then be a, just a, a, a single adult on your own. But 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 normally you've 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 been brought out by a family. Uh, you might still be living with that family, um, or you might have formed your own family, um, and so indifference are normally have uh, something that relate to us both as as a, a self and as, as somebody who cares for others so acquiring indifference and making these indifference part of your life is normally both a self-related and an other related activity mm -hmm. um and then okay so that's just the indifference so the indifference are both self and other related and then when you as you develop the virtues, so you're trying to develop, so, uh, you're develop, trying to develop in such a way that you are choosing, you're, you're selecting with wisdom, or you're selecting with courage, or you're selecting with temperance, or you're selecting um, um, with justice. Um, and so you're And so you're trying to um, you're trying to um, you're trying to shape your life according to the the application of of the virtues. Mm. Um, that's that's the 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 sort of um, that's that that's what development means. It's a gradual shaping of of your life in terms of uh, in terms of the virtues. A very useful text here is um, Cicero's work on duties. Uh, Cicero wasn't a Stoic, but he was a very good communicator of Stoic ideas. And book one of the book one of the on duties um, talks about all this in great detail. He he talks about the four virtues, what they are. And then what are the kind of actions that help us to that 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 help us to live our lives according to each of the virtues and then how these connect with each other and also so that's part of it is trying to make our lives shaped according to a gradual understanding of the virtues mm -hmm. that is at the same time a matter of developing a correct attitude towards the so-called indifference. So part of, of, of wisdom is having a correct understanding of, of how you deal with money, with, with, um, with property, with fame, and so on. Mm -hmm. so th these, these go together. Um, Cicero's book two of On Duties is, is in fact all about fame, or not all about fame, but a great deal of it is about fame. Um, because he was a, um, a politician, he was a very well-known politician, and of course, fame, public reputation, is is of the essence for for a politician. So he talks at great length about what the about, what, about fame. But the, the the point he makes is that the 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 only fame that's worth having is fame that is based on living your life according to the virtues. So if you live your life according to the virtues, he thinks you know, ideally at any rate, it's that that, that will produce um, fame and reputation and public support. And it's the only worthwhile kind of fame that's mm. worth it. Yeah. So, so celebrity, okay, you want to be a celebrity. Well, the, 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 having celebrity by itself is worthless. 
No, but it, but it could be worth something if, mm. if what you're really trying to do is to lead a good life, and that mm. and that that becomes known. And and you might say, well, it's being known is of no importance. Well, it is of no importance in a way, but it could also help you to achieve certain objectives uh -huh. that, that that you're that you're trying to you're trying to use the virtues in a way. So when you have these podcasts, you're trying to exercise the virtues in a way that that will 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 arouse an audience and the audience may become engaged in what you think are worthwhile activities mm -hmm. and so you're using your 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 trying ethan to, to develop a correct attitude towards the indifference in stoic terms and to develop the virtues is this beginning to make a bit more bit of sense or? yeah yeah absolutely what i'm what i'm hearing from you and what I'm noticing is like it's easy or at least I have this instinct of like it's easy to see the virtues as good and everything indifference as bad and to create that as a very like distinct yes. polarity what I'm hearing and what you're saying is there's there's a little bit more nuance to it where it's not that the indifferences are bad but that pursuing them for their own sake is bad and that exactly. that pursuing the virtues if the end like we like you're saying we still need a house to live you still need to like put food on the table so you're going to need money and like in and, and so what i'm hearing is like in pursuing the virtues there will still be the indifferences as like aspects yes. of your life but what's yes. important is that the virtues are the objectives and not the indifferences and so okay. if i'm pursuing wisdom and arouse fame in the process then as long as virtue is the objective, that that's not a bad thing necessarily. The fame is coming afterwards or as a byproduct of the pursuit of wisdom. As long as I don't start liking the fame too much and then make that my objective instead of the wisdom. Exactly. So as long as fame doesn't become like Midas's gold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it... it, <laughs> it <laughs> Uh, all you all you so all you want is the fame and then suddenly mm -hmm. everything cloys. Mm -hmm. um well the way they put it the stakes put it is that, that the indifference are neither good nor bad okay so there's good what's good which is virtue what's mm -hmm. bad is vice and living badly living a you know a life that's 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 without the virtues and which also the stakes would think is a mess because they think that the vice is 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 as any structure or organization. Mm -hmm. But the virtue, the indifference are neither good nor bad. They're neither good nor bad. They're, 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 they can contribute to a good life if they're well used, and they can contribute to a bad life if they're bad mm -hmm. used. Absolutely. That that's really makes a lot of sense. But now you've been trying to get to nature as a whole. Okay, so the other way of the other way of understanding happiness is is so is a, we have the life according to nature okay so happiness is the life according to nature life uh, we have the life according to human nature and we have the life according to the nature of the whole well what is the whole what is the whole what is nature well um okay so the stoics have a world view which we probably wouldn't share um but I'll say what it is, um, because it is their, their view. The Stoics think that the world is like, um, it is, if you like, animate. It's, it's, it's pervaded with life. Mm -hmm. So the universe is a kind of animate entity. It's pervaded with life, what they call pneuma, um, which is kind of fiery air, so the, the world is is animate. Actually, it's not such a crazy idea, as set of ideas, but so the world is animate. So we don't have, as it were, human beings, and then the universe, which is just a thing. So the universe is is animate. It's animated by by life, by vitality, and in their terms, it's 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 pervaded by God. But and then we think, oh God, but 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 this God isn't separate from the world and doesn't create the world. This God is the world. This God is embodied within the world. So God is that which is actualized um, in everything, in all forms of life, 
in all forms of um, uh, activity. So their God is more like a sort of um, energy, if you like, mm -hmm. a kind of energy and force which runs through the world as a whole. Um, but they also believe that this, the world is not merely, as it were, ethically neutral, but the world is good. The world is good in a variety of ways. Um, and one of the ways in which the world is good is that the world is good in that it enables the world or nature enables everything within the world mm -hmm. to exist and to flourish. So nature is an embodied principle of vitality that enables things to flourish and to realize their own flourishing, uh, to realize their own eudaimonia, in fact, mm -hmm. um, including human beings. Um, so God, the energy of God isn't, God doesn't have, you know, God hasn't, it's not a person really, and doesn't have his or its own objectives its its objectives are to enable the world to exist as a coherent vital uh, uh, inner energy expressing totality but it's a totality of everything within the world including material including um, sea land air um, the stars the world vegetation animals human beings we form a totality a connected totality mm -hmm. so that's the stoic view of nature um and of course some of it we don't we, we find difficulty with but but actually in in many ways it makes perfectly good sense the idea of a, a kind of the, the the world or universe as a coherent whole so living okay so what's that going to do with with human happiness well to live a happy life is to live, live a life that is like the universe in certain crucial respects. For instance, the universe is, is, um, has directed energy. It has energy that's directed in, this, in a certain way, um, that has a clear objective and focus. It is positive and creative. It's, it's, it's working towards creation of something. Um, the, the, the nature is also a source of care, of what the Stoics call providential care. Mm. So the, uni the, the universe cares for us, and the way it cares for us is by enabling us as human beings to lead a flourishing human life. And we do so as part of nature as a whole. So we live with us we are part of the world but then so are also the animals and vegetables and the rocks and the sea and the air <laughs> so the universe or the world is the cosmos it is the order that is embodied in this total entity mm -hmm. nature so living according to nature is living with the same kind of qualities, as it were, that nature or God has um, a focused and directed energy, um, but also care, an expression of care, care for our own lives and care for the lives of others. So it's all a bit, maybe a bit misty, but, but it, it does, you know, make some sort of sense. Um, and a life according to nature is also a life that that is a matter of living within nature. Mm -hmm. um, we need certain things, and we um, and and we uh, you know we make use of nature. We make use of uh, uh, the vegetable world, and you know traditionally the animal world too. Um, but we do so as part of the world and of course if we um this is where the environmental factor comes in because of course what what what's happened with human beings in recent years or decades uh, uh, is that we've we've we, we've we're not living within the world we're trying to take the world 
over, as it were, and exploit mm -hmm. all of its resources for mm -hmm. us. What people talk about the anthrop Anthropocene, we, we're squeezing out the rest of nature um, or we are making short term gains. We, we say, well, well, let's um, uh, let's uh, extract all the fossil fuels and then we'll, you know, and we'll use them all and we'll go faster and faster and be richer and richer and then um, uh, <laughs> and so on. Now, and I think in this sort of way, the stoic view of nature and of their view of, of the life according to nature as a life according to cosmic nature can be helpful to us. Now, in saying that, I'm not saying that Stoics were brilliant environmentalists because their, the, 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 their, the, 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 their life was so fantastically different. Um, I mean, that, that it's hard to say that, but, but, but yeah. of course, they, the way they were living, as a matter of fact, like, like every, the way everyone was living until about you know, the 19th century, was much more in tune with nature. Mm than the life we are leading now, because the life we are leading now is hurtling us towards disaster. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's, it's hurtling us towards global warming with uh, going to have incalculable effects, mm -hmm. uh, which will be most disastrous for human beings, uh, as well as for all the many other species and, and types of, of life that we have already eliminated many of but but uh, eliminating more so but so but i think it's more it's not that i'm saying that the stoics as it were led the most perfectly environmental life um but i think that the stoic ideas can help us try and get back on course mm -hmm. into a way of living that is, that is that is much better absolutely yeah that's what that's what i was really appreciating about what you were sharing is it's almost like an alternative to the way that we're showing up for that we're showing up right now that is causing us to hurdle towards this uh catastrophic environmental disaster and and i was almost making this connection between what you're saying with the indifference mm -hmm. the indifference being these things that are neither good nor bad but depending mm -hmm. if we're using them for vices or virtues, they turn good or bad. I was making that connection with almost, yeah, recently the machines and the tools that we have are becoming so increasingly more powerful. Mm -hmm. and, it, and what I'm making, I'm, I'm like seeing this connection between like, we're hurtling toward this environmental disaster. And mm -hmm. what I imagine the stoic perspective on this, and maybe this is a thread to to pull on is like we're using this this massive machine that is potentially indifferent is being used for vices or environmental destruction what would it look like to take these you know uh this increasingly powerful technology that the that our society is creating and actually shift it from the use relating to it with vice versus virtue or, or here's this, mm -hmm. I want to say like, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we have technology. What would it look like to support the environment or mm -hmm. human nature with that technology through the mm -hmm. pursuit of virtue rather than through vices? Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm appreciating your, your comments on um, Yeah, what does it look like to to live a life in relationship with the environment? And I find it fascinating. It's a little unclear to me still. The um, you were saying the qualities of nature that the Stoics have of of like creative yes. energy and and yes. how that kind of fits into this conversation too, or like yes. is I guess I guess the last question is like are these things that we are that we should strive to embody, like the virtues, like the energies of nature. Um, or is it like how how do you relate to like uh, enacting well, those as a part of life? Well, um, yes, that's not, that's. Um, I think that the. I think that the, the energy, as it were, is yeah yeah. It's um, well, it's quite a complex question. I think, I think that in a way, the Stoics do think we should be more 
like it sounds not not uh, in modern religious terms rather a uh, uh, a dangerous thing to say, but we we should strive in a way to be more like God, more like the Stoic God. Mm-hmm. Um, in that the Stoic God is somebody who um, somebody is a force is is the 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 force of nature is 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 nature is in itself beneficent benevolent benevolent or beneficent. So. Um, the use of the the the, the energy is um, present throughout the world, but that energy is first of all stable. That's one thing that the the Stoics have uh, their view of nature is it's stable, um, and it is forms a kind of coherent system. It forms a coherent system, mm-hmm. and it is. It is benevolent in the sense that the, this coherent system enables us, sorry, enables the world and the universe. It enables everything within the, the world and the universe to exist and to flourish. Mm-hmm. So, so those, I think these ideas are ones that, that um, I don't know, is it, yes, perhaps it's not so much a matter of, of trying to be like the, the world, but it's trying to, in as far as we have a um, a capacity to affect the world, it's trying to create or to recreate those conditions, those conditions in which the world can function as an organic and coherent system, a stable system, mm-hmm. and one that enables um, all everything within the world to to go on. Uh, um, uh, and to flourish and to achieve its eudaimonia. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem, so the first thing we need to do <laughs> is stop doing a lot of the things we are doing. <laughs> I mean, we have to, you know, we have to stop thinking, well, what really matters is my eudaimonia. Um, is, uh, you know, that's all that matters. And, uh, and 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 it's a, ma- a ma- matter, of, or we have to kind of get a better understanding of what eudaimonia is. So we don't think, well, the most important thing, the most important thing is that I have a good feel good factor, and then if I I will only get my really good feel fact feel good factor if I, um, you know, I have my vocations exactly where I want to be, even if they're the other end of the world. If I've got the money, I can go there. I can. You know, okay. Well, I'm just creating lots of uh, my carbon footprint is huge, um, and I'm building a you know a massive hotel in places that are actually deserts uh, and so on. We've got so, but that's okay because at least it gives me a big feel good factor. So I think it's a matter of it's a matter of each one of us individually and us as a society and as members of communities thinking more about what a world looks like and and would look like if we are trying to create a stable, coherent uh, 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 cosmos order which which in which everything can coexist and have its you know have its its scope for flourishing. Mm-hmm. And of course that is exactly what you know most environmental ethics is concerned with it is concerned with exactly those things mm-hmm. um and what i think obviously the stoics stoicism this ancient philosophy can't tell us you know exactly how that's going to work out but what it can do is give us a kind of a sense of how that would fit into a good human life of how of how leading that kind of life leading a life according to nature in that sense how as I said, happiness is the life according to nature, and it can be according to human nature, being rational, trying to exercise the virtues, and it can be according to nature as a whole. And nature as a whole is characterized then by uh, stability, coherence, uh, 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 and by um, an ordered in a space that enables um, the flourishing of everything within nature. So it's living according to that. It's living with that as part of your ideals. So your ideals are not just about, oh, I want my life to look like that. My life and my your ideals also include that understanding of nature as part of your 
objectives, part of the project, part of the telos. Mm -hmm. So I want to live yeah. the kind of life in which that would be uh, part of an objective. And of course, you know, you might say, well, you're not going to make any difference. You know, you can live, you can change your life as much as you want. It won't have any effect. But of course, if we all do that, if we all do that, then of course it it makes a huge difference. Right. That's why it's important to say these things, because then the more people who who have this as an objective, the more people live a life according to nature in this sense, the more likely it is that people will take the necessary steps. Mm -hmm. They will reduce their carbon footprint. They will reduce their use of fossil, of fossil fuels. Um, they will work towards net zero. And, 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 and then these things make a difference. And then what you're, so you're, you're, you're working to correct the mistakes of the past, which, which um, and, and working towards the life according to nature in this broader sense. Mm -hmm. Stoicism can give us a kind of ideal it can expand our ideals, so uh, our objectives, our goals, the life according to human nature, the life according to nature as a whole. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, which is also care, and we're caring for ourselves because we're 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 leading the best possible human life, and we're also caring for others because we're we're all affected by this. We're all mm -hmm. in it. We, we all have the same environment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm noticing as I asked that previous question, there was still like a very individualist frame I was coming from of like, what do I embody from what you just said to be more virtuous? What I'm noticing now is, is from what you're saying, I appreciate it was it's more like, how do I act ethically in relationship to the environment in a way that supports its own flourishing? And it's, it's less like, what do I, I, I'm noticing it's less like, what do I embody? And more like, how do I act in a way that supports the flourishing of nature? Because ultimately I'm a part of nature and yes. nature's flourishing is my flourishing. And so yes. it's more like, uh, yeah, the, the ethical and decision-making frame in yes. response to or relationship to nature. I appreciate that, the clarity and the uh, distinctions that you were bringing. Yes, it's it's partly the we. It's a it's a question of thinking of of, of not I but we. Mm -hmm. uh, it's partly thinking of oneself as part of the community, your own community, your immediate community. Of course, that's one of the Stoic ideas: the community of humankind. Mm -hmm. So we should think of ourselves as the center of a series of concentric circles. We are we're, we're a member of a. There's me here. There's my family, my partner, my. Um, uh, neighbors my, you know my community my country and so on out you go and then you've got the human human race but also mm -hmm. this we needs to be expanded in a sense in a further sense because we're we're also part of nature and we we affect nature and the more of us <laughs> the more of us act in a certain way the greater the effect on the effect on nature absolutely i love it um i see we're almost getting up on time i'm wondering uh there's any closing thoughts you want to share that feel unresolved or that you, um, or maybe, <laughs> well, was, or maybe your book? <laughs> well, you, you did uh, in one of your, uh, you did mention that, or in your preliminary questions, you mentioned the four persona theory. Um, uh, th sorry, the theory of the four roles. And I mm -hmm. think you would maybe we could say a little bit about that because it might be helpful too. Yeah, um, totally. Okay, totally. So the Stoics think that we have, Four roles, and it also brings in this question of individuality that we touched on earlier. So we have four roles. We have uh, roles as a human being. Okay, so that's a primary role. We all have, we're all human beings, better or worse. And we've got, you know, we, we can all aspire to the qualities of a good human being, of being rational and sociable and living the virtues. We also have our own individual role. Okay, so we have our own individual role, and that consists of, you know, some people have different talents, they have different inclinations, mm -hmm. and that's 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 not bad. That's just the way we we are. Um, um, not sure whether all animals are like that. Perhaps they are, but 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 we know that we are. So you have your individual role, mm -hmm. and then there are two more roles: your role as a as a member of society, as a community. 
that's another kind of role, uh, your given role. And then there's you, the, the role that you choose for yourself, the role that you choose for yourself. Of course, you choose when choosing it for yourself. And that's a, 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 a what we're working towards, what, what, how, what we want to do. Well, it might be a job or it might be a set of objectives or it might be a project. Um, but the last is, 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 is a kind of composite of all the other roles, because when you choose, you're not just, you choose a role, if you choose well, you choose a role that's right for you. So if you, you know, if you, if you have a certain kind of character and you shove yourself into an environment that, that you hate, you know, you're not, you're not choosing very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also choosing, of course, for others, for the other people who share your life and share your, your, your concerns. And you're also choosing as a good human being. So if, say, you, you have this wonderful job opportunity, it just involves, you know, killing people, um, then, then you're not really choosing as a good human being. Um, and, um, and, but now we want to say, I think in the light of all we've been saying about nature, is that you want to, as well as all these other roles, another role you would choose is yourself as, a, as your fourth or fifth role, might be as 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 part of nature, and and as somebody who 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 has a is is an aspect of nature and wants to promote the flourishing of nature as a whole. So I think the we might be, instead of the four role theory that we find in Cicero, we might want to make five roles uh, to bring in <laughs> nature as a whole. Um, we might not have need to do that if we lived a bit better uh, before, but 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 we do need to do it now. Yeah. And so, so roles can be helpful. And so are you saying that using these roles as frames, they can help us make yes. better ethical decisions? Yes, yes, because they, they can just say, you might say, well, you know, um, oh gosh, you know, somebody somebody's just said, why don't you do this? And then and then and then you can test them against these different roles. Right. And right. Say, and, and say and say, well, it seems quite attractive. But actually, no, it doesn't seem attractive because it's in completely in conflict to, to leading a good human life. Right. Um, or it might seem attractive, but no, it's not attractive at all because it means you, you've got to, you know, uh, you've got to completely subordinate the relationship you have to, you, to your partner or the relationship to, that you have to your, to your family mm -hmm. or your child. I mean, it, it, so so it can provide you with, and then the same is true of nature. You might say, well, this is a terrific job. It just involves me in flying all over the world on a permanent basis and building up a huge carbon footprint. So so no, I won't do it. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it provides a series of kind of useful registers um, that that can can help to keep us away from the life according to my das. <laughs> 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 totally totally i really i really like the role that you talked about of like our personal like predispositions or like there's certain yes. things that we're predisposed to yes. and then mapping those on to how are they in yes. what ways can these predispositions predispositions take form in ways that support nature community collective yes. So it's, on, that, so, it's that, so we don't have to think, oh, I'll just focus on the things that, you know, that I, I'm good at or that I, I'm inclined to. You think of, of the things that I'm inclined to as a human being or as part of nature. Mm -hmm. or as yeah, right. It's putting them all together. That's what Cicero says. It, it's, it's creating a kind of consistency. It's consistency between all these different roles. It's when all the roles can be played at once that then is a consistent life. And right. actually, that's another of the Stoic definitions of happiness. Happiness is consistency. And it's, mm. and of course, just on its own, it doesn't seem a rather empty idea. But when it's fleshed out in terms of th these five roles, as we've got now, or, or some of the other ideas, then it... it the idea of consistency makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah. Not yeah, just I'm... putting lots of things up, but making them consistent, living them in a coherent way. Consistency as in using these as guiding principles for our actions yes. in a consistent way? 
Yes. Yes, and also making a whole, making a, a life as 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 a whole, and not just you know um, in different all di different little bits. It's trying to make the make it as a coherent whole. Of course, there's more. Right. This isn't just kind of thinking now that you've got to do various things, mm -hmm, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but but um, but it's trying to achieve that degree of consistency. So that when right. someone says, "Oh, well, why didn't you take that job?" Well, you would say, well, I didn't want to live like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to live that kind of life. Totally, totally. It's almost like building up like votes for the objectives or the type of life that you want yes. in every decision. And almost as like a vote for yes. for it and building up coherence that all yes. those votes are in going in the same direction. Yes, you're voting. You want all your votes going in the same direction. And that will lead you closer to the life according to nature. Absolutely. I think you, uh, we can close. I think, I think I remember you making an example of, yeah, like choosing not to go on a vacation that like uh, in a far away remote place. And I just heard you relate it with the four or five roles. Um, but I, I also heard you, I think in the other, in the lecture, talk about how it relates to the virtues. Yeah. So I'm I'm like I'm wondering like is there this like connection between the four virtues and the four roles or like do they like support each other in some way? They support each other. They're different. You can't you can't correlate them exactly because you can be wise in relation to any of the roles, or you can be wise in relation to uh, the way you put the roles together. They're two different. They're they're two different. Um, they're two different ways of thinking about how you live your life. Um, so you can you take that. you can take your decisions and you can map the four roles frame on on it yes. or the virtue frame on it yes. or and, mm. and or and and yeah and yes <laughs> and is good and is stakes are quite you know and because then we can get <laughs> and the whole trying to get the whole yeah right. not 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 either not either not or. either or no, <laughs> Either the virtuous life or a coherent life. No, <laughs> putting, them, putting them both together. That's what we want to do. Yeah. That's if funny. We can, if we can. Or working towards it. Working towards it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Uh, if you want to share a little more about your book or where people can find your work, um, yeah, feel free. Well, <laughs> I'll just mention the title again. <laughs> um, learning to live naturally stoic ethics and its modern significance and it's available with oxford university press i'm afraid it's very expensive um which but the money isn't going to me it's going to oxford university press <laughs> but um i it's um 115 dollars or um 80 pounds i think um so I hope if a few people buy it, then perhaps Oxford will put it out in paperback and then it might become a bit affordable. Great. I'm also writing a more introductory a book on stoicism, which I hope will be more affordable again. Can't wait to see it. Um, well, I think that's enough of a plug. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciated the conversation and yeah. Thank you. Great. Okay. Well, it's been really good talking to you and uh, it's been a pleasure. And thank you for asking me. Absolutely. Okay. Bye. Bye for now then.